viewer, welcome back to 54A. Now then, a couple of weeks ago I made this little U bowl, or medium sized U bowl, and I showed you the bigger bowl that it come out of and told you I'd used a bowl saver or a bowl corer. And uh, I've had a few people saying, Can you show me the bowl saver? or what is a bowl saver? So I very quickly just set it up on the lathe with the big piece which I'm going to finish off next. So I'll swing the camera down and give you a quick glance at what a bowl saver does. Right this is the piece of equipment. Um, I've set it up roughly on the lathe. It goes on your standard um, tool post, tool rest post. Here's the big blank that I uh, cut the smaller bowl out of. There it is. And what basically happens is you have that turning round and this is all locked into place nicely and you've got a lovely curved blade here with a sharp tip on the end and you literally just go in like that and it cuts the core out of the bowl. There's a smaller blade as well that you can just swap over so you can take smaller bowls. I should have got like two blanks out of this really. But I just wanted to try it out. So that's basically it. This is this one's from Axminster. There are two or three different kinds on the market, but this is a really stable version and no blades go in between two posts. It's all locked into place nicely. So that's basically what a bowl corer or bowl saver does. Now this big blank has been uh, drying out for a few months now and it's down to between 5 and 7% moisture so I think it's about time it was finished off as you can see it's quite wobbly, hang on a sec it's not very true at all because it's, it's warped as it's been drying out but it hasn't cracked or anything, I left it about an inch thick a bit thicker on the bottom so uh, a great chunk of bark there so that'll probably have to go so I'm just going to turn this and um, finish it off so we'll have a big bowl and a little bowl right I've got rid of the uh, bowl saver all set up now, now you can see the gap here and uh, when you get to there and there's hardly any you can a heck of a, a warp on this thing so the first thing to do is uh, try and get rid of it. Get the tool rest as close as I can and uh, try and level this off. Should be fun. level wise we're just about there but it's still a way out of shape so there's a lot of work to do on this to bring it back to somewhere near round keep the tool rest as close as possible to the closest part that's just missing so lock everything into place nicely and try and get a bit of shape on it get in there quite a way to go but I'm just taking it very gently no good trying to rush something this size <clears throat> I might try with a scraper now
definitely getting there now. You can see how much I've taken off. It's gone pretty straight there now. But I've got to go right around here yet. There's a lot of work to do. But it's all good fun. I'm just going to try and sort of even up the inside of the bowl first before I carry on shaping the outside. I just seems to be doing a nice job. You can you could probably hear how far it is out the way it was knocking. Got a really thick ridge here going down to nothing here. So it's way out. But uh, that's the way I'm doing it and it's coming on okay. I might put my curved rest on now to help me get inside. Right I'm going in very gently with the Cut, round carbide cutter was taking it a little bit at a time because I don't want to I don't want this thing to catch tilting it as well to keep it sort of less vicious of a, of a cut rest and carry on with that I think. fair way with that now so I'm going to carry on doing that till, till I've got to a, a more or less round inside you can you can probably hear it's still bouncing away nicely so I'll see you later on right I've more or less got a, a sort of balance on the inside now but the whole thing won't be balanced until this is out of the way or evened up anyway so I've gone back to the outside now and I'm still using my round carbide cutter. Now, <laughs> you're always going to get the traditionalists saying, don't use carbide cutters, you should learn to use with traditional tools. And then use your carbide cutters. <laughs> it's rules again, isn't it, really? If you're happy using carbide cutters, then use them. They're great little tools. If you don't want to use traditional tools, don't listen to anybody that says you must do it because you don't have to. You turn with whatever you're happy with. I like using both, but on this occasion, this carbide cutter is doing a good job, so I'll carry on using it for a bit before I go over to a traditional one. quite a lot of already but there's a lot more of this to do so I'll just carry on and uh, fade out eventually <laughs> It's 
a great feeling when a piece that's so wobbly finally comes into balance and you can start getting a decent cut on it. Um, this bark goes in a heck of a long way and I might just leave it, or some of it, because I want quite a wide base on this bowl, being such a big bowl, I don't want something that's you know, so big. So I might just work on it a bit, take it down a bit further, a bit nearer the chuck, but um, leave as much on as I can. And now I might just go over to a traditional tool. coming on nicely. Got to flatten the bottom out yet though. just a question of carrying on shaping it and do what you want with it really I don't think I'll put any patterns or lines on it I, well I don't know yet there's enough in this wood I think right see you later well you know me with shaping stuff I don't really plan much out but as this was going along the first bit I did was, was this inch and a half and I left it pretty straight and I thought, yep, yeah, I've just thought that's going to be the shape. I'll put a sort of rim round it. It looks like a big pudding bowl. <laughs> Definitely going to be the shape. I don't even mind leaving that on. But, uh, we'll see how thin I, I don't want to go too thin. It's a big bowl. That's what I'm going to work on anyway. Right, back to traditional tools. And uh, I've just started taking more out of the inside now. And uh, just a nice sweeping, that's why the handles on these things are so long you see, you can get a good pivot a nice sweeping action well, <laughs> most people do Some really nice shavings off this so my tools nice and sharp and the wood's just right by the feel of it sharp chisel you get a really smooth shiny finish and that does not help when you're coming to sand the bowl down eventually that, that really doesn't need sanding that bit right so see you later on well that's about as thin as I want to take it uh, because I remember there's a massive piece of Sort of bark inclusion on the outside which takes a lot of the depth away so 
If I go any thinner, I might end up going through it, which is a bit silly. I like that there, I'm going to leave that like that. It's a question now of uh, polishing or oh, sanding it up, which is going to take quite a while. But uh, usual rules apply. Sand it to 240 grit. Sanding sealer, Yorkshire grit. Give it a polish. Okay, I've uh, sanded it, Yorkshire gritted it, and now I'm just going to apply some uh, Hampshire Sheen Original, I think, because I don't want too much of a shine on it. So I'll give it a good couple of coats of Hampshire Sheen Original, and um, then some microcrystalline over the top of that, give it some extra protection. Right, I think that'll do. That looks okay to me. Next job is to part it off and um, just polish the bottom. Sand and polish the bottom. And I shall do that with a power sander. It's a lot easier. Um, when you're parting off, you must know this already. If you, hang on, I'll get the camera. That's better. Instead of going dead straight, if you go in slightly, not that much of an angle, but a very slight angle, so you've got a very slight concave base. Um, that'll make everything sit very nicely on your table, or your Welsh dresser, or wherever you're going to put it. Right then, just about finished the bowl. I'll show you in a minute. Just a couple of things. Um, you kiss, of course. I should mention it again. Mid July, great weekend. If you haven't been, if you didn't go last year, go this year. It's going to be even better. I have stickers. Yes, I've given in, and I finally have some nice glossy stickers. If you want a sticker, let me know. Uh, private message me on. My Facebook page, private message me on here, or get in touch with me through the um, website. And if you've got something to send me, I will send you one of these. I've already sent loads all around the world. <laughs> also, Seggies, if you want your set of Seggies, get in touch with me from the, through the website. That's it. I'll leave you with some glorious pictures of the big bowl. Bye for now.